Welcome to video 12 on Fun with Arduino. We have our software user interface for the day night light module working. We can change the cycle time via keyboard input. So let's now have a look how we can do this in a different way with hardware with a rotating knob. And that rotating knob is placed on a variable resistor, a potentiometer like this one. If we connect the outer pins of the potentiometer to 0 and 5 volt, then the middle pin of this uh, variable resistor will give us a variable voltage between 0 and 5 volt. Let's connect it to uh, the Arduino, to one of the analog pins. Uh, let's just select pin A0. The question is what value does this uh, variable resistor need to have? Well, the Arduino advises not to go uh, beyond 10k. So let's do that. Let's take 10k. We can go lower, but the only uh, thing that happens is that we draw more current while that is not needed. So let's try this out. First let's have a look at the uh, analog read command as such. This very tiny program starts with uh, enabling the serial interface and then in the loop we do nothing more than just read analog pin A0. We don't even store the value, we immediately print it on screen and then have a little delay. Let's have a look what happens if we rotate the knob. I have a potentiometer here on my little control panel. Uh, the serial monitor is running and the value it currently reads is 228, 29, 230. So yeah, there is a little bit of noise. Let's rotate the knob fully to the left. The minimum value seems to be zero. And we also have readings of one or two. So yeah, that noise that's really there. Rotate fully to the right, we can see the numbers climbing and the maximum seems to be 1023 and also here we do still have this little noise. Well, that's something we just have to live with. Okay, so we know the readings are between 0 and 1023. How can we make a cycle time of those readings, let's say between 1 and 9, as, a, as, a, as a just a first start? There is a very useful mathematic command for that, and that is called the map command. So what, we, what it does is it takes a value, in this case the analog reading on pin A0, which is in a range between 0 and 1023 and it calculates a new range between 1 and 9. This map command does all the mathematics for us. It, it changes one range of values into another range of values. Of course this cycle time uh, we need to declare it first, so I made that an unsigned integer. Let's have a look at this code. Alright, serial monitor is running. The value now is 3 and there's no noise. And I'm going to rotate the knob. We are at 2, at 1. Yeah, the minimum nicely is 1. Now let's go to the maximum. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, one tiny little 9 I saw there, but then it, it stays at 8. That's not what we want. We want 1, 2, 9. Uh, there's something a little bit off. Apparently this map uh, instruction converts the highest value of the input range, in this case 1023, to the highest value of the output range. And 1022 already is 8. And that's not what we want, uh, so we have to smuggle a little bit. Let's uh, say that this becomes 10, and then uh, I, I, sh I should guess that it will work. Well, maybe just add 1 over here to a non-existing value, but then I know for certain that 1023 is 9, 
and uh, some values below it are also still 9. Let's try this out. Alright, serial interface is running again. I can change the numbers here with the potentiometer 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, this looks good. This is what we want. Okay, let's move on. Now that we have the range, the map function working, let's add this analog read to the code that we had in video 11. Um, what I did over here is add our new pot meter pin uh, called A0 as a define so we can easily change it. Then I also introduced here a cycle time old. We need that because we want to print the cycle time only once when it is changed. Like we have done that same trick here with the switch, remember? Alright, then in the setup we are going for the first time read in our uh, analog pot meter because then we already have the, the value that it is at at the current moment. So this statement simply does what we did in the, in the previous section. It reads it and it maps it to 1 to 10. Yeah, that, that turns out to be 1 to 9. And then we also uh, tell the cycle time old to become the same as the current cycle time so that it does not uh, keep printing. Then uh, in the loop, there we have it, we had over here at the, the, the very top of the loop, we had a section that read the keyboard input, but now we of course are going to change that with our new cycle time uh, analog read uh, function with the map function in it. And then of course if it has changed, the only then we do print it. Uh, so that's actually the same as with the keyboard input. Not too much changes. Let's have a look how this works. Okay, so here after startup we see that it already has an initial value that is the reading of the button or, or the, the pot meter in the setup section. Now I can rotate the knob and we see that it changes. Oops. But it, it still has a, a bit of suffering from that noise that we saw before. Uh, just at, at the, where it needs to change, it starts to print a couple of times, yeah, because then it cannot decide is it one or two. Alright, but it seems to be working. Let's switch on the, uh, the light now. Yeah, it has a cycle time and I can change it. I do not see it yet that I changed it, but I did. Yeah, now I changed it to 4 seconds and it is on the new cycle time. So let me switch it off again. Uh, how can we get rid of that noise that we still are suffering from a little bit? A very simple solution to get rid of that noise is when the cycle time has changed. Uh, just simply add a tiny little delay, 100 milliseconds will do. Uh, it's short enough not to notice it or to be bothersome and it's long enough to get rid of this noise. Another change that I like to make is, uh, okay, we do have an analog read that can go to 1023. Uh, why uh, do we uh, have the output mapped to 1 to 9? We could make that a bit uh, finer. So I changed it over here to 1 till 30 and then multiply by 10. What this does is that now we get uh, as an output range uh, values of 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds. Uh, so I, I can go up to 5 minutes, but with 10 second uh, steps, so to speak. Of course, I also change that, uh, have to change that over here in the uh, first setup section. So let me do that. Uh, times 10, that gives me 10 second steps. Let's have a test and see how this is going to work out. 
right system started and let me rotate that knob so we can see yeah, 80, 70, 60, 40 that works perfectly steps of 10 let me switch on the lights and well when I now rotate the knob nothing happens and that is the same with the keyboard input the cause of this is that we are using a delay statement to generate our timer and during a delay statement the Arduino cannot do anything so if I would really like to see my user input then yeah, we have to wait till the cycle is over so uh, which is right now let me see if it goes up to 300 yes it does uh, so in the next video we are going to get rid of this delay statement such that we can continuously see when a user changes an input on the keyboard or on this rotating knob that it is also printed out immediately. See you maybe back there. Bye bye.